Hey there, if you clicked on this video, chances are you're probably considering Brown as your university for your undergrad or maybe master's. The good news is I'm a current senior at Brown who's graduating in two years and kind of experienced the college both online and on campus for four years now. And I'm here to give you an inside scoop of some of the pros and cons of Brown University and information that you won't be able to find online. So I actually applied during the start of COVID. So the last year of my high school was actually fully canceled. My high school was in Beijing, China. We were a IB school. So all our exams got canceled as well and everything went remote. My first year at Brown was actually fully remote. All my classes were online, Zoom. Um, I didn't actually get to see campus until my sophomore year. So if you've applied to Brown, or got an offer from Brown, it's likely you've heard of the open curriculum and we're kind of famous for that. And I feel like on the website and how it's kind of portrayed um, is a little vague. It just kind of tells you that, you know, you can take whatever classes you want. There's no cur core curriculum. And of course, to a certain extent that is right. So although I'm currently concentrating as we call it, or basically my major is in computer science, before, I actually thought about doing music and economics at Brown, and I've taken a lot of economics classes. I thought about getting a double concentration, which is like a double major, um, in econ and uh, CS. But I was able to change that with basically no repercussions. And what's great about the open curriculum that is also kind of not super advertised, we only have A, B, and C. Well, I guess and no credit. So there aren't any waiting so you wouldn't be able to get an A plus or A minus or B plus or B minus and so on. And how that works is actually usually there's actually no curve. Um, and we say that there is a curve but not really in the sense of having a top percentile. It's more for setting a lower boundary. Usually classes are capped at 90% especially for the CS classes I've been taking. So if you get 90% and above you're guaranteed an A. And, you know, if your classmates all get 90%, then, you know, the professor might get a talk from the department for having bad proportions of grades, but you guys all walk away with A's, no problem. So I don't know how much this was advertised, but there's a special option for taking your classes called SNC, which is short for satisfactory or no credit. So it's basically pass fail. But what it isn't really kind of known to all is you can technically graduate with all SNC classes if you wanted to. It might make your job prospects a little harder, grad school a little harder, but if undergrad is your last stop and you kind of, you know what you want to do, it's possible. I've seen people who've taken SNCs for every single class. You know, I wouldn't suggest this personally, but it's possible. And that's basically saying if you get a C grade or above, then you automatically pass. And the funny thing that is definitely not advertised is on Brown, on our official transcripts, if you fail a class, so you no credit it. So either, you know, you get a grade lower than C, or if you're in this S and C option, you get the NC credit for any sort of option. Then, guess what? It disappears from your transcript. Yeah, so like, on your unofficial transcript, so the one that Brown has internally, yeah, you'll be able to see it. But, guess what? When you're applying to jobs, when you're applying to internships, when you're applying to grad school, other schools won't be able to see it. And that's the same for dropping classes until I believe two weeks before the final exam. So there's actually a lot of leeway here, which is why we have something that is definitely a kind of gray area for Brown students and it's our grade inflation. I think I saw in a stat somewhere that our average grade was 3.76, which is crazy high. And I think we're actually first in all of the universities in America. And I guess you decide if this is something that's good for you. If having a high GPA and, you know, getting it at a relatively low cost comparing to, I guess, other scores, then Brown is a no-brainer just for the alone. Another thing that is not advertised or can't really be shown in kind of the online stats is you actually get professors teaching you in your classes and you have the sense that they actually want to be there teaching you. And it might sound kind of weird because, you know, maybe at your high school, all the teachers seem like they really wanted to be there because that was their profession to teach. They were like solely an educator. Professors 
the gray line is kind of hard to set. So I've heard from friends at a lot of other schools, and I'm not gonna name names, but some that you think are really prestigious. They have these professors just on the course code. They come for the introduction and then that's it. Um, and it's because of this complex thing where you know your professors are not only teachers, but they're also researchers. They might have their own labs, and they also gotta, you know, think about their funding and their grants, and you know, if they wanna spend more time on their research. And also, some universities, they actually would wanna prioritize the profit of it all. You just have graduate TAs or postdocs teaching you, and they just keep swapping. But at Brown, it's, that's absolutely not the case. There's office hours that all the professors have, and when you go there, you know, you can just have a chat with them. You can chat about the course, you can chat about your projects for advice. You can really talk about anything you want and you feel like they really wanna to talk to you and give you their advice. And now we're kind of getting into this gray area of just very strong characteristics of Brown. And I guess to some people, they would be pros. To some people, they would be cons. And one of the biggest ones is location. So. Brown is located in Providence, Rhode Island. And for those of you who might not know where this is, it's basically an hour's drive from Boston and I guess three hours drive from New York. And so this location, we're kind of at the shore, but it's definitely not like a beach city like LA or Miami, right? And it's East Coast, so it gets cold. And it's not like a little town, it's still the capital of the state. And there are tall buildings, I wouldn't say skyscrapers, but you know, it's pretty modern um, to some extent. But definitely, I wouldn't consider this as a big city. And you know, my experience of living in Beijing, Hong Kong, and Vancouver, I feel like even compared to Vancouver, Providence is just, it's at a much smaller scale. So everything is very boutique, I would say. and. That's to say that we also get a very good campus feeling and I believe that especially coming here and experiencing it, you get a super good blend of kind of very beautiful scenery, right, and a very safe campus. But it's not so entrenched in nature that you kind of need to drive seven hours until you get to civilization or stuff like that. Because there's an Amtrak station um, and basically you can get to Boston um, in like 40-50 minutes or one hour on the MBTA. And if you want to go to New York, that's also kind of the same case. There's trains that just go there for a few dollars if you book early um, and it's going to be like three and a half hours. Another thing is with Providence and its size, you really get to explore the place and know it really well. So not only do you get this really good feeling of a college campus, there's also a quite boutique selection of stores, like one of the most famous tart stores, bakeries called Pastiche, and they just have some of the best fruit tarts ever. And I've tasted a lot of fruit tarts, but I think this really has a special place in my heart. I guess the next big thing, I would put this definitely as a con, but I did hear some very minimal kind of reflections on it as a pro, and that's Brown's food. So I guess um, there's a meal plan system, and it gets decreasingly intense as you um, kind of spend your time here at Brown. So as a freshman, you have to buy the most intense meal plan, and that's, I think it translates around three meal swipes a day. So that's like 21 swipes, or there's this flex point sort of mumbo jumbo that is a bit complex. Um, but basically, unless you're a person who manages to wake up every day at a super healthy time and you just eat three meals every single day, there's absolutely no way that you'll not have a bunch left over. And I've only heard of some of my athlete friends actually being able to finish all of them because they have training in the morning. And you know, Food wise, there's a few cafeterias. So there's the Ratty, and I've actually made a video kind of showing the dining experience there, um, which I personally, and I've actually worked in the Ratty, and that's kind of a story for another video, but it's clean. I mean, sometimes it's okay, but you know, being a very <laughs> person, I guess with relatively high food standards, I just don't think that it makes the cut. and. It's not to say the portions are big because it's kind of like you can get your own. So if you want your share of unhealthy pizzas and kind of 
mediocre burgers that you just make yourself with buns and and beef patties, then you know you'll be fine. And there's another cafeteria called uh, V Dub, and it's short for I think Vernie Woolley, but no one really says that. And that place is also kind of like you can get your own, and they usually have these bowls. So when I used to go, it used to be like shrimp bowls, fish bowls, and you can add rice, and you know, there's all sorts of stuff like that. I feel like it tends towards kind of like Mexican food and that sort of cuisine. Um, and that place is like, not bad. I wouldn't say it's like super good either, but I believe it's slightly better than Ready. But that comes at the cost of, I guess, less variety because it's much smaller cafeteria. And I guess the best of all of the cafeterias is Andrews. And so Andrews is located at the old Pembroke campus. I think Andrews is hands down probably the best overall, but their pre-portion and it's usually pizzas, sandwiches, and changing variety of relatively not bad sort of food choices. So there's like their sort of Providence version of pho. They have, you know, like spaghetti and some Asian cuisine that is kind of remade. Like it's not super authentic or anything, but it's not bad. And then there's also this place called Joe's and that's kind of like a late night diner. Um, so they have your favorites, you know, the mozzarella cheese sticks, the late night fries and burgers, and it's all super oily. And it's that kind of junk food that you'd want maybe at night as like, I don't know, like a comfort food. They also have the salad section um, and it's not bad. Um, it's a pretty big bowl as well. And sometimes there's food trucks outside and you can use your brown sweat. So during my freshman year, when I lived in a grad center that was actually right across the street. Um, so I did go there quite a lot and I ended up putting on quite a lot of weight. And then for food options, the other one is dining out. So you have Thayer Street and there's quite a lot of restaurants and a bunch are actually opening as of now. Like I see a lot of like advertisements and you know, it's getting better. I think COVID really hit hard on the economy of Thayer Street. There were a lot of restaurants that I heard existed previously, but are closing down. And you know, like a few of them are pretty good. And I guess I can make a separate video on kind of my ratings of the restaurants and kind of recommendations but i gotta give it to providence there's actually quite a lot of boutique restaurants um so there's quite a lot of good french food italian food and you know their standards are pretty high it's not too expensive um it's kind of what you expect for the quality of food that you're getting um so there are those options um yeah and and then i guess another big part of college are the dorms and brown has a very strict on-campus policy so freshmen is mandatory as most universities sophomores are also mandatory for dorms and then this gets kind of weird juniors are also mandatory technically so by kind of the official regulations you can only move off campus in your senior year but then there's a caveat which is that during your sophomore year as you're rising into your junior year there's this off-campus lottery that you can fill out and basically you get the chance to maybe go off campus and what that means is you know you'll get authorization and you won't have to pay for dorms but recently brown actually opened up two really really nice dorms so that problem is basically solved so if you're watching this video now the rooming situation has gotten a lot better and the new dorms are really nice i have friends that live there and you know it's just really good and if you get those i guess probably not as a freshman but maybe in your junior year then you're pretty you're gonna have a good time I guess another aspect that some of you guys are thinking about is kind of Greek life. And I think that at Brown is definitely a lot kind of more minimal than you find at other universities. So there is this place where there's all the frats and sororities, but it's just not a huge part of the campus experience. I think only about 10 to 20% of the campus body is part of a fraternity or sorority. So if you're very, very kind of into kind of joining a frat and or joining a sorority and that's kind of the college experience you want, I think Brown is probably not going to be the best choice that you have. You might want to consider your other options. But on the other hand, there's a lot of students that really don't like this Greek life sort of frat culture. So if that's the case for you, then Brown's a really good place because you wouldn't really feel any sort of peer pressure to join a frat. 
or kind of like a heavy influence from that sort of culture. So I guess to wrap up, you know, for every school there's pros and cons and you know, I had the chance of other universities um, to choose from and ultimately I came to Brown and I don't regret it a single day. I think it's hands down one of the best undergraduate experiences that you can get. And I hope that this can act as sort of a guide for those of you guys navigating, you know, RD decisions that are coming out or have come out. And I guess those of you thinking about uh, early decision choices and whether to choose Brown. And you know, if you guys have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section and then I'll try to answer all of them. I guess now, uh, those of you who are choosing to enter your undergrad experiences, it's your time and your journey. And I hope that this video can give you a little insight on whether you should choose Brown or not. Thanks for watching.